Hello and welcome to AutoInform Online Magazine. My name is Frank Massey and in this how-to feature I'll be discussing how to test piezo injectors. The vehicle we've chosen is one of the latest generation Bosch common rail direct injection systems that have now been employing piezo injectors for probably around two years or so. The problem with piezo injectors is mainly that once an injector develops a fault, it closes down the power output stages from the ECU. Now that in many ways defeats some of the opportunities we have of actually testing the circuit. And by that I mean they're driven, they're power driven, by capacitor discharging, in effect, quite a high voltage into the injector, about 120 volts. This then creates a positive current flow in the piezo crystal of around six or seven amps, which is the opening event. The opening period then is controlled by the ECU and there are several opening periods, seven, several fueling events which take place with piezo injectors. Uh, typically from three up to, I believe now, around eight individual fuel delivery events in one power cycle. Once a failure has occurred, the power stages are then shut down on all injectors effectively the engine will not run. That then defeats any possibility of measuring current through a circuit which is the most accurate way of testing functionality. So we then remarkably then resort to using a multimeter. So what I'd like to do first of all is demonstrate the correct operation of a piezo injector using current measurement so that you're aware of what the pattern, what the events look like and then the simple test of proving then what the fault is, how the fault exists um, and how to diagnose it. Now of course the most obvious opportunity for diagnosis is serial communication. There will be a DTC, the DTC will be accurate and the DTC will identify which cylinder injector is faulty. But I think it's also of interest to be able to measure each injector perhaps to see if there's a potential of a failure on another unit. So let me begin by first of all setting the, um, the equipment up which is the, the current clamp um, with the oscilloscope and we'll do a, a normal running test first of all and then uh, unplug the injector uh, and then do the, the multimeter test. First of all I'm going to use a inductive clamp, it's actually a Hall effect clamp but uh, by means of induction we're going to measure the current flow. I'm going to set it to a range of 20 amps. I'm only anticipating 7-8 amps maximum. I'll need to zero the calibration eventually, but for now I'm going to place that around one of the conductors and I now need to set the scale to cover a 10 amp range. <clears throat> Now have a 10 amp range set. We now effectively need to run the vehicle um, because I don't know which way around that clamp should be. In other words, which uh, potential uh, we're going to pick up. We need the positive event first. So I'm just going to run the vehicle, uh, pick up the image, and then use a trigger to actually stabilize the image on the screen for you. Right, we have an image of several injector events what we need to do first is stabilize one particular event. So I'm going to use a trigger and I'm going to select a repeat trigger in the bottom left box. I'm going to set the trigger event at around 50% of the current event. So it's a nice stable trigger point. I've also set the trigger right over to the left hand side of the screen because I'd now like to focus on one of these events which seem at the moment to be a singular event. In fact, they are not. I'm going to drop the time base initially to one millisecond, one thousandth of a second per division. And you can now see that there are actually three events. Each power cycle of the engine takes place with three individual injected fuel events. I think we can probably go down a little further just to see, there we are, 
So we can just about get these three events on one screen. What you can see from this is that we have a positive opening or charge event of around 8 amps and a closing or discharge event of around 6 amps. And we have three individual events. A pilot, intermediate and main fuel event. The timing of which, the space ratio between, it, between each event is adjustable. And the amount of fuel quantity, which is normally adjusted in the main fueling event, also is adjustable through the software. Um, I believe that the adjustment of fuel quantity is a square of the increase in rail pressure. Obviously it has variable rail pressure and there is an additional adjustment to fuel quantity which is a, a mathematical equation based on the square of the increase in fuel pressure. So we have three events. The way to look at piezo injectors is that the opening event is to be viewed or understood as charging the crystal. This creates a small expansion within the piezo crystal and with indirect control this then acts on what is known as a hydraulic coupling or a servo coupling that multiplies the movement ratio which then effectively opens the injector by means of, of hydraulics. There are however some new development of piezo injectors which are direct acting where my understanding of that is that the uh, piezo um, expansion itself can directly open the nozzle. They're direct acting piezo injectors. So even, even though piezo injectors are relatively new, they are already developing and evolving very, very quickly. Because we can now have multiple events with one power stroke, emissions, power, torque is all very, very much improved. Uh, I believe that we can now have up to eight events per power cycle of an engine. So it's an incredible change that's taken place in the way uh, diesel fuel is delivered into the engine. Fuel pressures are obviously increasing as well as the, the accuracy of control of the actual injector. That's as far as we can go with an engine that's functional. Um, current is the way to go. Um, we don't measure voltage. Uh, current is really the, the effects uh, of, of, of around 120 volts being fired at the injector by a capacitor, but ultimately we want to monitor current in the circuit. The catch is, if current isn't present because there is an injector fault, then the engine will be prevented from running by all the power stages closing down. So the next stage now is I turn the engine off um, and show you how to do this simple test with a multimeter. I'm going to just wait a few seconds until the PCM uh, powers down completely. And that's simply to avoid installing a DTC. We can remove the clamp. Now, of course, bear in mind when you do use the current clamp, it's around one circuit only, and the orientation, the polarity, um, should ensure that the positive uh, current cycle comes first. So we now have a situation where the engine isn't running, uh, and want to confirm the actual um, condition of the injector. Now what we're going to do is a theoretical measurement across both terminals of the injector. We're going to remove the vehicle harness for this to the injector. There's a theoretical figure of 200 k ohms, which isn't in itself definitive. What we need then to do is to measure from each pin to ground, because when these crystals fail, they tend to go short to case. In other words, a short circuit between the piezo crystal and the case of the injector. So it's a simple measurement across each of those circuits. So first of all, remove the socket. Connect the meter to resistance. And I'd want to do a, a quick calibration check. That's fine. Now, my first intention is to go across both pins of the injector. And I'm going to place a multimeter So I can see it. Now I'm going across both pins 
and it will take some time to make this measurement, it's quite a high reading, and I'm expecting around 200k. Now we're on 175, 177. Um, I'm trying to keep the, the pressure on the terminals, they are quite a, a way in. These probes are actually a little bit large. There we are. I think that's a good connection. 173, 174, 175, 175 K ohms. Quite happy with that. That's quite close to the expected value. Now, the, the definitive measurement now is from each pin. So I'm going to go initially from the left pin actually to ground. Um, I can't reach the body of the injector, so I'm going to go to the engine block, and the critical measurement here is infinity. There should be no reading whatsoever. If there is any value less than infinity, then that injector is faulty. You must measure across each pin, and the reason for that is that a small error would not be seen across the first measurement. We measured 175K originally, so it's important that we measure from each pin to ground. And there is, as you can see there, infinity across both pins. Should that injector be faulty, you will have a reading. So any reading at all, less than infinity, that's a problem. And that is as simple as it needs to be. Um, it will confirm that the injector has formed a potential partial shunt or short to the body of the injector or ground, and that will instigate the complete closure uh, of all the power output stages to the injectors. Um, as I say, there will be a DTC for that, but I think it's always <coughs> wise. It may be an intermittent fault, perhaps, um, related with heat. That often does happen, where the injector may fail intermittently first, but it's a, a test that is very accurate um, in terms of, of diagnosing the injector. Thank you for joining me in this feature. If you're interested in developing your diagnostic skills, please visit the AutoInform website for details of our face-to-face -face training, DVDs and learning modules. We're also able to supply a range of tools. Thank you and I hope to see you again soon.